Hi, my name is Whitney Bookman and I'm a deacon at Liberty Center City in Philadelphia. I am going to share with you the member reflection for the week of June 8th. As a trained community organizer, we often say that the first revolution is internal. This is not to say that we should just all be nice people and the world would be better, but the recognition that the systems, institutions, and structures that make up the society in which we live are made up of people. And the only way in which we truly can change the world to bring more peace, unity, justice, and mercy is to first address our hearts. I'm gonna confess that as a Christian, the idea of dying to self, taking up my cross, always seemed very abstract to me. I don't think I ever quite got it until this past week when I was challenged often uh, about looking deeply inside at my own sin when it comes to racism. And this is something that I believe our whole country, if not world, has to examine and root out in our own hearts in that we have grown up in societies, in schools, listening to news and within family structures that teach us these ideas uh, that become both conscious and unconscious. And so it was with this on my mind and really God speaking to me in so many, it was almost like he was smacking him, me in the face with the message um, through devotions and scripture and conversation um, that I really took a deeper look at what it means to die to thyself. So I wanna read for you this scripture from Luke chapter nine, verse 23. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. In John 12, 24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. As I have struggled over the past weeks to know exactly when to listen and when to speak up, in which spaces I needed to confront the racism in my own heart and try to challenge that in my brothers and sisters, as we are a community in which we depend on one another to lovingly correct. I also know the importance. God has designed us with two ears and one mouth, and especially in this moment, I believe we are called to listen. And so as I struggled to do those things and felt completely imperfect and flawed in the ways in which I tried. I truly understood that the only way I would be able to show up in these spaces and root out the evil in my own heart was to deny myself, to let myself die. The ideas and the hopes and dreams, no matter how perfect I believe them to be rooted in our Christian faith, knowing that God's imagination, God's hope for our future is so much greater. And as long as I cling to these ideas that are not of our Lord, and even when they are, knowing when I need to humble myself before him, the longer it will take to see justice and mercy in our world. I appreciated um, Apply God's Word, which is a teaching ministry of Mark Ballinger, as he reminds us that as Jesus was on the cross, the suffering that he was enduring in this impossible situation, eventually his legs were broken so he could no longer gasp for air to remain in this earthly world. While those on the other side, on either side of him, continued to push up with the strength of their own legs, their own human strength, to continue to cling for breaths of air on this earth 
And it's a reminder that sometimes we too are stubborn and cling to the hopes of this world, to our own wisdom, to our own strength. And God has to break our legs in suffering and impossible situations so that we will die to ourselves and begin to live the new life that he has designed for us. It is with a heavy heart, yet hope in a Lord eternal, in his strength, in his wisdom and power that lives within each and every one of us, that we would take the time to die to ourselves so that he may live in each of us as we strive to restore and reconcile our broken world. The Lord be with you.